Hi, this is Trombo with Tea Time with Trombo. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about the language surrounding miscarriage. Now, whether you have had a miscarriage, you probably know somebody that has miscarried, or you will know somebody in the future that miscarries. And miscarriages are, you know, sensitive topics and very uncomfortable to talk about. But if it is uncomfortable for you to talk about if you've never had one, can you imagine what it is like for somebody that has miscarried to talk about it or to not talk about it? So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about a few things you should say to somebody that has miscarried and a few things you should avoid saying to somebody that has lost a child because it is very important um, for women to feel heard, for men to feel heard about this. It is usually, you know, a thing between a couple. Men are affected as well as women. And um, yes, it's a great subject to explore because the language surrounding miscarriage is very, very murky at the moment. Institutions can be very insensitive about describing how a woman lost a child. Um, friends and family are very insensitive about, you know, talking about the child that somebody has lost a child, talking about it at dinner parties or, you know, at birthday parties. People just don't know how to handle it. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about a few things you should avoid and a few things you can do um, to improve your language surrounding miscarriage, what you can say to somebody that has lost a child. So what should you avoid saying to somebody that has miscarried? Number one, oh, you're going to have another child. Don't worry about it. In fact, you should get started right now, you know, so that you can have a child in the next year. This is really, really insensitive because you are saying that they should have a child to replace the child that they lost. It's as if you're saying they should replace a pair of shoes. It just doesn't work that way. You cannot replace one child with another one. It's like saying that, well, this child was kind of defective anyway, so just go ahead and have another one to replace the one that you lost. That's very, very insensitive. Please do not say that to a woman that has lost a child. Do not tell her that she's just going to go ahead and have another one. It's fine. She shouldn't worry about it. Just get on it, you know, like it's in the factory or something. It doesn't work that way. Please avoid saying, oh, you're just going to have another one, or you already have three, um, so you should be okay. No, she's not okay. She just lost a child. Another thing you should avoid saying, especially when this woman that has had a miscarriage, you know her really well, and she's pregnant again. So say she has two children, she miscarries once, and then she's pregnant with another one. And you say, oh, you're going to have your third child. You know, you're pregnant with your third child. That's insensitive because she's pregnant with her fourth child. Especially if it's somebody that you know, it would be great for you to acknowledge, oh, you know, you're pregnant for the fourth time. She knows that it's the fourth time. You glossing over it and saying it's the third time just makes you really, really insensitive. And this goes for people that you know. Of course, if it's somebody that you don't know and you know that they have two children and don't know the inside story that they were you know, pregnant and they miscarried and you say that it was their third child, that's fine because you didn't know. But if it's somebody that you know and you know that they've miscarried, it's very insensitive of you to not acknowledge this child that they lost in between. So please don't go server and say, oh, you are now pregnant with your third child when you know that this is their fourth pregnancy and they've miscarried one of their children. So please acknowledge all the pregnancies that they've had, unless they have given you permission to just say, oh, okay. But most of the time, it is really hurtful for women when you don't acknowledge the fact that this is the fourth, their fourth pregnancy when you know, you know, they've lost one child. Do not lie to people and tell them that it was God's plan for them to lose a child. That is simply not true. God does not make people miscarry or give them cancer or diseases to teach them a lesson. This is insensitive and it is not true and you should avoid saying that. It is not a part of God's plan for a woman to lose a child. So what should you say to somebody that has had a miscarriage? The most important thing you can say is just say sorry and give them a hug. That usually is all that somebody wants to hear is that you're sorry for their loss and that you give them a hug. There is no need for you to fill the room with all of these insensitive, nonsensical words. It's okay to just say you're sorry, give them a hug and keep quiet and let them breathe and just let them know that you are there with them. That is what people want to know is that you were just there with them in that situation. Just say sorry and give them a hug. 
Another thing you can say to somebody that has miscarried is, how can I help you commemorate your child? It is very important for a woman or a couple that has miscarried to do something, to have a little ritual, a little ceremony to commemorate the fact that this child existed, right? This could be, you know, having a tombstone put at the graveyard, some women go out and get tattoos, you know, a piece of jewelry, something. You could ask, how could I help you commemorate your child? Can I make something for you? Would you like me to go with you to the cemetery? Would you like me to go with you to the jewelry store? Just ask and hear what it is they say. And maybe they didn't even think about the fact that they could commemorate their child in any way. And by you suggesting, would be really, really thoughtful. And just go with whatever it is that they want to do. If they don't want to commemorate their child in any way, that's also their decision. And maybe they need time to think about it. But the fact that you suggested and you acknowledge this child is more than they could ever ask for. Another thing you can do for a person that has, a mis has had a miscarriage or for a couple that has a miscarriage is to ask them how they are doing on this particular day. Usually when a couple has miscarried, we try to gloss over or have them get over it, you know, um, how is everything going, you know. Sometimes you can just ask, how are you doing today? Because healing from something like this is a day-to-day -day thing. How are you doing today? How are you doing this moment? How can I help you today? And hear what they have to say. If they want to talk about it, great. If they come out and say today has been really hard, just listen to what they have to say and kind of go with the flow. But don't force people to get over it. Don't force people six months from when they lost their child to say, oh, are you still grieving? You should have gotten over it by now or you could have been pregnant already by now. Just ask, how are you doing today? And be sensitive about that particular day. Are they wanting to go out for a coffee? Take them for a coffee. If, are they wanting to just sit at home? Then just sit with them. But just ask them about that day. How are you doing today? Because healing is a day by day thing and they need you to just be there for them on that day. The most important thing to remember is Parents of a child uh, that has been stillborn or, you know, they've miscarried in the first trimester or something like that, these people are still parents. They're still parents of this child. Whether they have had children before or if this was their first child, they are still parents. They conceived a child. And it's very, very important for us to be sensitive to that. Another thing that I think people are afraid of asking is actually talking about the baby. It's, it's a very, of course, a very sensitive time and you don't want to ask, you know, did the child have a name, all this kind of thing. But by not talking about it, you kind of hide away from the fact that it happened and you kind of pretend like it didn't happen. Your world goes on, but the world of the couple is at a standstill because they lost a child. So... If it is somebody that you know really well, it is okay for you to ask about the baby. Did you pick out a name for the baby? You know, pick, you know, like prod a little bit and see if it's okay for you to actually be there, to, to go there. But the most important thing is for you to acknowledge that this baby existed and that this child was special and that you recognize that and that you were there for this couple in any way possible. We shouldn't be afraid to acknowledge the baby we shouldn't be afraid to call them by their name if the couple picked a name, you know, because it is much better for you to address the baby as opposed to just saying sorry for their loss, you know, because this is also another way of glossing over it. Of course, you are sorry for their loss, but if it's somebody that you know really well, I'm really sorry that you lost your baby. I'm really sorry that you lost your child. It's okay for you to acknowledge that this has happened because if you pretend that it didn't happen, it makes it harder for the couple because usually they want to talk about it too. But then if you're glossing over it, they feel that they should too because then they're caring about how you feel about the situation while going through their own pain. So this has been Tea Time with Twombo talking about the language surrounding miscarriage. I hope it was really helpful for you. Please go ahead and subscribe to this podcast for more information about how you can declutter your inner life so you can live a better outward life. Thank you so much.